Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is not actually a node because we're going to be revisiting all of our particle system nodes that we uh, did previously. But uh, this time we're going to be covering them within the 3D world. So if you haven't gone over any of those particle system nodes, you might want to jump back in there because I will not be going over every single setting. I'll just be highlighting uh, the 3D stuff within those nodes and uh, d not the differences, but what we can do within the 3D world using those nodes. And primarily because when we covered particles before, we only did it in the 2D world and there was a lot of stuff we didn't cover because it only works within the uh, 3D environment. So jumping in, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and bring in a particle emitter and a particle render. Now, one of the big differences is within our render node up here under output, we're going to be using 3D instead of the 2D. So make sure you're selected on 3D output mode. Now also remember, once we select 3D output mode, a lot of this stuff isn't going to work. So our blur or glow or blur blend and some of our generating buffers and merging or depth merging particles you notice it says 2D behind it because it only works when we're in the 2D mode. There is, however, new stuff that'll work when we're in a 3D mode, such as our material IDs. So we can come in here and change our material ID. We can do that globally, or we can do it per set. So if we have multiple renderers assigned to different sets, if you remember right, if we go here, we can assign it to set one. And if we have a, another one, another particle emitter, we can come in here and assign it to set two. So within our renderer node, we can come in here and say set one is material ID one, set two is material ID six, or whatever you want to set that material ID to. That way all your material IDs will be working correctly. We'll set that on global. Additionally, we can change our object IDs on the global level or per set. So same way, if we want to change the object ID for these per set, we can do that here. So that is the only main difference within the uh, 3D output node. So let's go ahead and uh, connect up our emitter. And let's see what we got. And one thing we didn't really go over when it came to our emitter is what we used as our region. So we did cover it, but uh, we covered it real quick. So when we're doing 3D, a lot of times we're going to be using meshes as our uh, regions that generate our particles. So let's go ahead and select mesh. Let's go ahead and connect a mesh, which we have one right here is our shape. So we can go from our out to our input. And now we have a new emitter based off of our little shape. So first let's go to controls and let's uh, see up this number. Let's change our variance to uh, 20. We'll leave our lifespan. Actually we'll uh, do 120 and we'll change the variance to 20. And let's give it a little velocity so we can see what's going on. And before we can actually see our, our little uh, particles there, what we need to do is connect our render node. So if you remember before, we had to add a little camera or we input it, but within the 3D world, all we have to do is go from our render output into our uh, little merge over here. And if we watch what's happening, now we can see we've got a bunch of particles. So let's go ahead and uh, move this over and let's look at our merge 3D to see what's happening. So. As you can see, we've got our particles going in our little 3D world. So if we want to change the direction, say we want our particles going towards our camera, all we have to do is go to our uh, controls and change our angle on the Z axis. So now we can swing that around within the 3D world in that direction. And additionally, we can change it on the other direction if we need to as well. So let's go to our render node and get our angle the way we want it. Say we want it coming kind of towards the camera. So there we go. 
And if you notice, we've got a uh, little shadows going on here. So right now our particles are a little difficult to see, and that's because we're in a hardware render. Now, if we switch to say software render, you notice our point lights just lit up pretty, pretty bright. And that's because within our software render, our lighting doesn't affect our particles. I take that back. It doesn't affect some particles. So if we go to our emitter and uh, let me knock this down to uh, say five. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't lock up on me while I'm recording. And I go to our style and I change it to say a uh, blob. Now under software render, a blob will be affected by your ambient light. However, your point and your point clusters will not. And uh, unfortunately, this is the fastest modes to use, but you can see uh, the lighting really doesn't affect these. For your lights to affect your point and point clusters, you need to be on hardware renderer. And then we can come into ambient light and we can up it more if we want, or we can just add spotlights to light up our, uh, our point or point cluster particles. So let's go ahead and knock that down. So if you see, if I take my spotlight and I move it around in the Z, you can see that's affecting those point lights like the spotlight should. If I, uh, my intensity, you can see it even better. So there you can see, as I move my spotlight, it's moving through those, uh, point clusters. So let's go ahead and up that again to 200. Now, additionally, just like uh, before your shadows, when we're on our hardware render, I'm going to be dependent on your anti-leasing and your settings. And if we are in a software render, your shadows are naturally going to be a little softer with these. But again, we can't light our point clusters correctly. <laughs> but just like within the 2D mode, we can come in and we can change our style so we can change our color and we can change it over life so we can pick our little purple and we can add a new one and we can uh, say change it to uh, yellow and there we go now we've got uh, our point clusters changing color over life in the 3d world so those are the primary differences with your emitter in your renderer when it comes to 3D and 2D output modes. Um, in the next few days, we'll be covering more of these because we're going to be covering all the nodes that go in between here, like the uh, turbulence and the particle kill, the particle avoid, which all act a little differently within the 3D environment. And uh, we'll make some pretty cool stuff using the particle system in 3D world. So I will see you in the next node breakdown.